just a Mexican walking in the door. <laughs> that sounds right. Ah, hello, Sundowner. <laughs> yep. Sundowner is also a memorable boss, more for the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Voiced by Crispin Freeman, believe it or not, everyone. I'm sorry, sir. Our business hours for the day have ended. Oh, the fuck is that so? Legs. I bet you are. Don't tell me we're closed again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me. Who needs metal detectors? <laughs> or stealth? Screw it. We don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ow. Did you two find yourselves using the um, enemy lock function in this game a lot? No. I don't even think I ever used the enemy lock function. Okay. I never well, did. As you can see, I, I used it a lot. <laughs> I think it helped. But yeah, I gotta love it when they make killing the enemies this easy. That, like, right away I didn't know how to do Zandetsu. Mm -hmm. So, like, I literally played, like, half the game without using Zandetsu, like, ever. <laughs> then as soon as it- yeah. as soon as you learn how to do it, like, that's, like, well, like one of the few things you do, cause you can just kill them faster. Yep. Then and it recharges recharge. your energy. Yep. So you can go into blade mode a little more indiscriminately, like I am right here. Air charge! One of Raiden's upgradable moves. Definitely a yep. really nice help. You're saying something, Andrew? Oh, he was on the he was on the table. He's not getting up. He's having surgery. <laughs> Spine <laughs> surgery to be exact. From Jack the Ripper. He doesn't need a scalpel. He just uses a sword. <laughs> Fuck oh, him. I made the hole too big. Guess what, punk? You're the patient, and I'm the surgeon. Surgeon Simulator 2014. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to play that game. 28. I want to hmm? play Surgeon Simulator. <laughs> is that an actual game? Yes, yes. it is. Oh, okay. It, I feel, it's a full game. I, I feel like I've seen it on Steam, actually. So. Well, since this is 2015 now, when we're recording this. Yes. Um, last year was like the year of like simulators. Uh, go. Goat simulator, simulator, farm simulator, train simulator. Fucking Flight train. simulator came back too. Yeah, I don't know what was with all the simulators this year. <laughs> oh, past year. And I am bread also came out last year. It's a bread simulator. I wonder how Revengeance would play if it was a f if it was in the first person perspective. I don't think I'd like it. I agree. <laughs> I I just don't generally like first person games unless it's a FPS because I'm already expecting first person. Mm -hmm. Well, FPS. Yeah, it's in the name. It could but be false advertising if it wasn't. Third person, I want a refund. <laughs> <laughs> you lied to me. Try the game out. You lied to me. It's not full FPS. It's a mixture of third person and first person. Yeah. I'd say that Metal Gear Solid 4 was the first Metal Gear game that you could play as more or less a third-person shooter. And with Ground Zeroes, they've more or less continued that trend. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer that better because then you can tell, um, either with like over-the-shoulder cameras or kind of like with an oblique angle, you can tell like where people are, whereas with like first-person you're kind of guessing sometimes. Yeah. My, yeah, my biggest reason for liking third-person shooters as opposed to first-person is because you can more or less see everything in a third-person shooter, everything around your player character, and it doesn't take forever to turn around and see what's behind you. Who the fuck has a working mini, er... You came yeah. when we were closed! <laughs> World Marshal! <laughs> this well, is how that lady said we were closed! This is how they handle crowd control. <laughs> Sir, we have an intruder. Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> Man, the Gatling guns. Um, sir, why do we even have them there? Um... Well, of course, we must detract our intruders. Dance. <laughs> Dance for me. <laughs> Let's see how many bullets you can take before you fall down. And then how many you can take after you fall down. 
But yeah, for this section, just hold the enemies off until the elevators start working again, like that. And you're like, bye! <laughs> <laughs> See you later! I think I actually killed everybody before the other. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that was supposed to happen, but okay. Want the grenade blow up or something? Perhaps. I don't know, I looked away for a sec. So that's where the brains in the server room will be, up top. Indeed. But that elevator can only access the lower floors. You need to get to the 20th floor and pass the security gate there to reach the upper area. Let me guess. Time to find another left hand? Well, that is the problem. Security cyborgs would not have sufficient clearance. But managers and senior staff have already been evacuated, no doubt. So... The only option is to cut the power to the security gate, which will not be easy. It is powered by no less than three systems, including a backup power supply. That's still you relatively easy. The electrical control panels to disable them. In any case... It's easier than clearing that one bridge in Metal Gear Solid 2 of C4. The electrical panels are most likely hidden in the walls. Didn't you have to shoot them? Uh, yeah, you have to shoot them with a sniper rifle. Oh, uh, the fucking sniper. I think I actually stealthed in this part. Did you actually use stealth in this part, Andrew? Then I had no fucking enemies the first time they. I ran through that. Really? Yeah, there was like nobody there. What difficulty were you playing on? Easy. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's probably why, though. This is normal. And oh, look, it's these things again. The only one was that last person at the door. Mm, oh, yeah, I remember. Okay. When it comes to action games, do you two usually play on the normal get difficulty, or do you usually go for easy first? Or? Um, I'll generally play easy first, just so I can find stuff, mm -hmm. and then later I'll play yeah. um, higher difficulties, because then I know where some stuff is already. Yeah. So, basically, with like higher difficulties, they'll just increase the like like vitality of like mooks and stuff or just increase the number of them so i mean as long as i know where some of them are going to be they're most likely going to be in the same spot they're just going to add more yeah so that way you already have somewhat of an edge going into the room if you play it on like new game plus or whatever andrew what about you i play on the easiest difficulty first then i get to know how the game plays out and works and everything and then i play it on the hardest difficulty just to the like that. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the achievements you could play on like hard mode, but it's better if once you've mastered the game mechanics themselves and then play it on a harder difficulty because then you won't have as much of a struggle. Yeah. Okay, as for me, it depends on it really depends on what the game is. If I'm familiar with the type of game that it is, then I'll probably go with normal. Just because I feel like that's the way that the creators intended the game to be played. And then, if it's something that I'm really new to, then I'll probably start with easy first. There should be an uh, for example, I think... Use your enhanced AR to locate it. Now that I think about it, when I first fired up Metal Gear Solid 4, I actually can't remember what difficulty that I went on. I'm pretty sure I didn't do... I'm pretty sure I've never played Liquid Easy. So it was probably either Naked Normal or Solid Normal. But then again, I, I was already used to the stealth genre because I'd played Metal Gear Solid 1 before. I remember Metal Gear Solid. Twin Snakes. Yeah, I've have any of us have actually ever played the PS1 original? On uh, I have it. Do you, you have the physical copy of it? or For PS1 or did you have it remastered? For PS1? Oh. It, was re it, was, uh, it was put into a collector bundle. It wasn't really... Collector's bundle? Yeah, it was 1, 2, and 3. Oh. Yeah, it should be for PS2. No, it wasn't remastered or anything, but... Yeah, well, they... Metal Gear Solid 1 really hasn't been remastered, per se. The only thing that comes close is Twin Snakes. Yeah. Um, and then I have... I have the VR... The separate VR training mission on the PlayStation. For the original PS1? Mm-hmm. I, I would love to see... 
a rendition of Metal Gear Solid 1 using the Fox engine. Yeah. Because if you ask me, Metal Gear Solid 1 is really where that where Metal Gear Solid really started. Because, I mean, we had Metal Gear and we had Metal Gear 2, but... I mean, I, this is me This is me speaking, but I'm pretty sure that... I, I feel that people who have played the Metal Gear Solid series probably have not played the Metal Gear games. I mean, I, I've, that's true for me. I realize that may not be true for everyone. But yeah, just to see... Metal Gear Solid 1 played out using the Fox engine. I think that would be a really, really cool thing to see. Then again, it would be the second remake of that game, though. Yeah. But I think there was, like, some interview where, like, I think they asked, like, Kojima what his, like, least favorite game was, and it was the remake on the GameCube. Aww. <laughs> Even though I liked it a lot. Yeah. A lot of the complaints of Twin Snakes came from how over the top the action scenes ended up becoming. Yeah. Well, your past is most, uh... what you get and I think first person mode made Revolver Ocelot a joke of a boss. Military. Yeah. Oh, man. Compared to the average third world child soldier, I can't really complain. Most of them, they're the sort of gorillas your typical patient gets paid to slaughter. Uh, perhaps, but, uh... This shouldn't be news to you, Doc. Uh, yes, yes, but, uh... Look. Just help me take care of those brains after I Oh yeah, and I remember what I was doing here. Do my business. So you kinda see how Raiden's rocking back and forth as he's talking to do yes. to Doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every time he does that the camera kind of freaks out a little bit and then zooms in like that. Ah, more of them. So would you two classify Rising as a hard game? No. Okay. Uh, what difficulty would you classify it under? I'd say Seriously. it's probably about normal. It takes some stuff, uh, some stuff you have to master in order to be proficient at the game, but not. It's not terribly hard. The only game I'll give hard so far, even though I haven't really played it, Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, that game's just hard. Well, no shit, it's supposed to be made to yeah. prepare to die. Yeah. Yes, I've died a whole bunch of times on that game. Andrew, your thoughts on the difficulty of this game overall? I think it. I think um, the Ryzen was way too easy. In what? In what sense? <laughs> like, some of the enemies were that hard to kill, and it wasn't... I'm used to the old style of Metal Gear Solid, that's probably why I'm saying it is. Oh. He's so probably it... also um, ranking it low, kind of like me, is because it's just like, we have more experience with like hack and slash games, so it's like... This is nothing to us. <laughs> it, it's, it's fairly similar in like, control-wise, or control-wise anyway. Mm -hmm. To so, just a general hack and slash? Yeah. There, there's things like the Zandetsu which make it like unique, but you know, hack stuff till it dies. Okay. Yeah, I'm very familiar to hack and slash. I mean, especially if you play like God of War, Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors is definitely hack and slash. You're, you're a one-man army, okay? Uh, it, it, I guess it's not like a true hack and slash, but that's like all you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from what I've so, from what I've seen and from how I've heard the Dynasty Warriors franchise described, I, yeah, I would say attack and slash. Yeah. Uh, the saddest part is Dynasty Warriors is just pretty much the same game over and over, and I don't even know how they're making money out of this. Well, the, the same could well the same could be said of FPS, Andrew. Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare, Dog AI, Fish AI, Present. But, wasn't that for Ghosts? Yeah. Okay. No. Present Mario 64. Get on my level, COD. <laughs> no, I I get how COD's making money is because there's they come out with new storylines and shit. Yeah, but half the people don't play this story. Yeah, they're they're it, it's really for multiplayer, online multiplayer. If you ask. Yeah, I'm one of the few people that play COD for story though, even though some of it's pretty bad. But it's all when it comes I play to for a story though. Yeah, when it comes to story in a COD game, I'm pretty I'm pretty much expecting Michael Bay standards. 
So it, it'll try, but I expect it to eventually fall flat on its, on its face if I really try to dissect it. Michael Bay. <laughs> Explosions. <laughs> Testosterone. The set, but the thing about Dynasty Warriors is it's the same storyline over and over. Well, that's just for the main ones, because now we got Hyrule Warriors, we got Gundam. That, that doesn't count. I don't. It's still Dynasty Warriors. What doesn't count? Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors was supposed to be a Legend. It's of pretty much Legend of Zelda Cross. Yes, yeah, Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. But it, it's essentially a Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, the, Gundam is still the same storyline over and over and over That's again. That's just following the anime. Oh yeah, that it, that running up the building sequence—it it is actually kind of easy to get hit. So conveniently, the game forgets to tell you that you can still jump as you're running up. 